and good evening everyone and you'll notice that I'm uh, being a little bit more affectionate with the fur balls tonight than usual um, I really don't want to get too deep into it but let's just say that uh, my landlord thankfully is as angry over what happened as I am but one of the handymen that she hired decided not to wait for me and mom to get back from her physical therapy appointment to let himself in leaving the side door open which as you can see is not a good idea these are indoor only cats and all right i'm going to try and, try and calm down okay so welcome to the show um i don't know how many people are going to be in here that aren't normally here but um this is where I use various 3D programs to sculpt a miniature based on a character concept. And uh, tonight's miniature, technically the character is a druid. But you could probably use the miniature to represent a barbarian as well, because of the, the, the concept that I have for this character. I have done a previous version of this character as a miniature. But I can't distribute that particular miniature because it uses geometry that is not mine. And so I figured redesigning it using my custom geometry so that therefore I could distribute it, you know, pass it out among the masses. Yes, here, yeah, have a have a have a crazy wild bar dragonborn. That'd probably be uh, pretty fun. Now the original version I have in both unpainted and painted varieties. The painted variety is sad to say a uh, let's see, there he is. It's sad to say an FDM print. Um, basically, the character is a dragonborn druid, but you know, rawr, rawr. Now you'll notice that the face looks kind of deformed a bit. And yeah, so this is the one from the Anycubic Photon. Not only is the face not deformed, we can actually make out the teeth. I still have some support residue to clean up, but I mean, look at the, the scales on his back and on the back of his arm. Well, the ones that are poking through where the... Uh, bracers were. I mean, look at that. Killed. But all he's really got is kilt, pouch, couple of straps, and arm armor. And a kopesh to represent his scimitar, but even then the kopesh is blunt because I used a regular scaled kopesh and inflated it, so to speak. Which means it doesn't really fit per se. Now yes, he is considerably larger than the average figure. I mean, let me pull out Human Ranger. Human Ranger. This guy. There. You see how much bigger he is. That's because the character, well, rolled absolutely maximum height and weight for a Dragonborn when I made the character. But tonight, we are going to be re-sculpting him. That particular character's name is Mead Gradal. Mead Gradal. Yes, I went cheesy and went to an online Elder Scrolls Draconic translator. His name means loyalty returned in battle. In other words, he's loyal to his friends. Yeah. But, um... Uh, like I said, I figure you could use him to represent a druid, or a barbarian, or potentially even a ranger, but he's only got one sword and no bow, so it'd be a kind of a hampered ranger. Yeah. He used a kopesh to represent a scimitar, because they're curved slashies. And I have somebody who wants to say hello to everyone. Everyone, this is Ralph. 
back. Butt. Fuzz butt. What are you doing? Act. Crazy furball. Yes, you. No, nope. No, no. Come on down. Come on down, Fuzzbutt. Come on. Good boy. And now, onto the floor you go. Go on. <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, yet another interruption. Anyway. So enough about the character. Time to go ahead, pop over here, and start working on the character. Um, now what we're going to do, first things first, we're going to place on him the parts that we're going to need. He is a silver dragonborn. We're going to use... Well, first, let's change the race to Dragonborn. Yay, look at that. He grew and now has a dragon head. Mm-hmm. What? What? Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway. So now we add... We're going to add on the uh, horns on top. He is silver, so we're going to actually make these into more of a thin. But that's good enough for now. And now we're going to add in his primary weapon on in his right hand, a Kopesh. This one, much better sculpted to be a Kopesh for his scale. Uh, Kopesh, right hand. Yeah, here we go. Nice, heavy hacky weapon. Actually, because I scaled him up, it's actually a little bit too big, so I'll go up here to parameters. We're gonna scale it down. Oh, I forgot to change its center back view. Bing! The center needs to be here. And... Back in the center of the hand, yeah. So now we're going to scale that copex down until it fits the hand just right. Translate it forward just, oh, too much. And now we're going to the back view again. And we're going to move it up a little bit like that. Yeah, there we go. A Kopesh. Actually, let's go ahead and make it a little bit longer. That would be Z-Scale. Because he is supposed to be a really big guy. Now, just to show you, his current scale... His current scale is 100%. We need to make that 108%. Oh, I forgot. Parent those horns to the head. Okay. He needs to be 108 scale because he's a big dragonborn. He's literally as large as it can be as he can be. And then we have modifiers. And what we're going to do with the modifiers is we're going to make him just a wee bit more muscular because he is big old. Look at that broad back. Huge shoulders and chest, and yeah, he's he's a he, he's a he, he's pretty darn bad. And now we're gonna give him a kilt. We are going to then take the pauldrons, but first thing we're doing is edit figure. 
geometry add smoothing modifier yeah then we're going to go ahead and make the right one invisible and from a front view selection type selection mode uh, marquee selection geometry editing or geometry assignment assign to face group our color yeah this way he's only got one shoulder piece and I also need to go ahead and go to the chest and left well, left collar let's go ahead uh, parameter uh, tool settings and we're going to geometry selection select all and then weight editing fill selected Weight editing fill selected. Weight editing fill selected. And weight editing fill selected. There. Now, that's geometry selection, clear selection. This will keep it from deforming too badly. It'll stay in this shape, which we want to try and once again. There we go. Uh, let's try generic. No, base shape matching. Yeah, that's better. It's not as bad, and we can tweak it. Oh, no, that's not good. Okay, we're going to have to to modify this when it comes time. Anyway, that is our basic critter. Um. Let's go ahead and give them boot cuffs. Yes, I've made pre-made boot cuffs to make something, some make uh, mass production of some characters a little bit faster. Now, the pose. My earlier version, <coughs> as you can see, had digital grade legs. I don't like that. It's, it doesn't fit with the way they're normally portrayed in the books. This doesn't fit with any other aspect of Dragonborn. It's just something... I had a figure that happened to have digital grade legs that everything else was perfect for. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him in something similar. A similar pose, but not exact. So... He's like this. Although I'm, go I'm going... No, I'll, let's put him in a different pose. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see. What would be a good pose? Let's... Alright. He's going to have... Sort... Perhaps... In a pose like the, you know, maybe in a pose like this. I guess you could also use that for a prim more primitive fighter, not just so. The arm comes forward and up, and then down. So we're going to start from the. We're going to actually do the upper torso first. So, it's going to twist. Bend. Bend. Twist. No, he needs to bring the whole arm forward. So...
Let's make it a little bit bigger. This, yeah, a little bit more Z scale to better fit the stance. And we need to go for that right collar, and we need to go side to side forward. Untwist it a little bit. I'm going to get this in the good spot. And of course, the fact is that he is going to and we're going to bend the arm. Too much. And the hand. And unbend the arm a little bit. And we're going to do it from the collar. Okay, now we're going to bend the hand back a little bit more. And that's a little bit, not quite enough, so we come out. A little bit more until the fingers are very clearly off. yeah and now we select the thumb we're gonna that's gonna be a an area we're gonna end up being blending okay now This right here is to help break up the symmetry of hip to chest. Right. Now, we're going to take the hip and we're going to bend it forward just a little. And then, oh, and then we got to kind of rotate it like that. Bend the leg forward and out to the side a little. And then bend the knee. Okay, not so much side to side. Maybe not quite somewhat. And then bend the foot. And now we're going to drop him to the pavement so I can go to the front view and select this foot and we're going to wiggle it until it's pretty much There, pretty much flat on the ground. Now let's go ahead and side to side him a little bit more that way.
because we want to try and bring it down. Okay, we need to bend in his leg more. That's going to be a bit farther than it needs to be, but that's so that we can sit here and tweak the foot. Make sure that the foot is in place. There we go. Now, actually that's too much because we need to bend the, uh, keep forgetting to bend the calf a bit more, and then bend the foot, because we want it to be in place behind, below, beneath, behind, between, if you're a uh, Rush fan, and what do you know, I almost guessed it right. And there we go. Perspective. And now we bring the this foot down. And we need to make so that this foot is near the ground. We're going to twist the leg like that. And I keep We're going to bend the foot down flat and then kind of twist it until it's mostly flat on the ground. Heck, you could almost use him as a monk like this. We need to There we go. He's in a nice little muscle slash combat pose. No, we need to twist it more, or twist it, untwist it more, and then side to side it more. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice little pose for him. And I have a, pe a viewer. Yay. They're not in the chat list, but okay. So this the next thing is to... Oh, let's look up a bit because we need to... Do I want to have his mouth open? No. 
but I do want to make his brows like angry. And the way I do this is I Z rotate and I Y rotate to bring them out. And then symmetry, left to right, accept. This is going to be tweaked when it comes time to actually sculpt his expression on the miniature. Now, this is the is the figure. This is Midgradal, at least for now. So we're going to hide the horns, hide the kopesh. Hide the skirt, hide the pauldrons, and hide the, bo the boot cuffs. Actually, with the skirt, let's hold off on There's one thing we need to do. Expand from selected. We're going to check, okay, the right thigh I have twisted negative 25. So the right thigh here we're going to twist positive 25 to make it a little bit more of a relaxed bit because our thighs twist our clothing thighs tend uh, loose fit clothing thighs tend not to twist I'm gonna Yeah. Oh, no. Too much. Now, we're going to hide the... Well, oh, one other thing I've got to do. Okay. Now we're going to hide it. File. Export. And this is going into... Meshes... Broadcast new. Mead. It's M I I D. Body. Accept. And now we're going to make him invisible and then make his horns and his kopesh. Well, his horns and his kopesh are. Yeah, his horns and his kopesh, visible, file, export. Actually, no, not the not the kopesh, the horn separate. File, export, mead, horns, accept. And then hide the horns and make the kopesh visible. File, export. Mead Kopesh. And then we're going to make the sword invisible. And we're going to make the tunic skirt and the boot cuffs visible. And we're going to export these as Mead clothing. Okay. Now, that's pretty much just making, the, not making, but preparing the basic geometry we're going to be sculpting on. So now, I go to ZBrush. Now, in ZBrush, what we got here, this star is just base geometry. You know, it's it's a placeholder, so to speak. I clicked import and I navigate, you can't see these boxes, but I navigate to broadcast new mead body. And it looks kind of eh, as it is. So the next thing we do is we can start adding in sub-tools appropriate for the uh, other parts. Like, so we append, 
load it, and that's another placeholder, and we import the horns. Then we append polymesh, and we import his copesh. And we append polymesh, and we import his clothing. Now we're actually going to take this clothing and we're going to move it up a couple over here. We're going to hide the horns and the kopesh. Now we're going to change the tool to our move topological tool. Make the mouse a bit bigger. We're going to move this out a bit. and from the center. Make it a bit more relaxed. And then back in the back, grab it here and pull out just a bit. So now, the next thing that we're going to do is going back up here to the body, and I'm going to break out the tablet, the Wacom, yes, and what I'm going to do on the Wacom is I'll shrink the mouse quite a bit. And I'm not going to bother with anything around the hip area because that's going to be covered by the uh, kilt. But what I am going to do is I'm going up here to the head and I'm going to tweak the expression. And I switch to inflate and kind of turn it down just a little bit. And I'm going to inflate his brows just a bit to try and reinforce his expression without totally smooshing and we're gonna pull up on here to represent you know the, the muscles coming up he already looks angrier and then Move topological. Uh, make grab here and kind of no. Come on, move topological. A bit of a snarl on this side. Now, going back to inflate and shrinking it quite a bit, we're going to actually inflate the lower lip. The reason for this is, even on a sculpt from my oh-so-wonderful Anycubic Photon, the lip as it is is hard to see once it's printed. And great detail is fine, but we want to be able to paint once we're done. Okay, the expression is pretty good. Now, is there anything that we need to tweak? before we start subdividing because some of the stuff we're gonna have to tweak after we subdivide okay right here 
that part of the bicep unnatural okay now we're going to inflate up up here because this is where he kind of needs it and we're going to inflate the point of the elbow okay now what we do we go into geometry over here and we're going to subdivide once twice three times delete lower and then we go to dynamesh we set the resolution to 768 simply because that's what seems to work best at this critter and we click dynamesh okay Oh, I'm wrong. We don't click Dynamesh yet because we need to come in here with the Mead Clothing. Geometry. We're going to subdivide it until it's nice and smooth. And actually, before we do that, I see one thing we need to work on. This part of this calf is a little tweaky. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to subdivide it. Frame. And I see another spot we need to tweak a little. Okay. Now let's bring the subdivisions up a little. See, when you're, if you're smoothing, it's a good idea to cover as much ground as possible. So the fewer the polygons, the more coverage. And now we're going to merge down. Always okay. This is now one subtool. Now we dynamesh at 768 and a blur of zero. And this should bring us to about you know, a few hundred thousand. Yeah, 700, that's good. Now, our belt is going to be coming from the area where the kilt meets the body. So, I'm using the mouse instead of the tablet, so I always have 100% this is where we're going to be getting our belt so I'm gonna gonna erase the lowest I also have to erase these overlaps where that poke through with the leg not so much erase as smooth over polish over and of course the Botox not to be confused with the Botox if you have migraines or you want to not ever smile again. Yeah. And we're doing it. Happy little butt cleavage. Not something you'd ever expect, uh, what's his name to say, you know, Bob Ross. But who knows, if he was doing this, maybe he'd say, And we got some happy little butt cleavage. I'm an Air Force guy. I can do it. Yeah. Yes, he was Air Force. All right. I'm going to blend just a little bit here. Okay. And then we move around. 
and sweep, sweep, weep, 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 weepeth. Okay, and then right here. Okay, now let's frame out. And we have the basics for our figure. You still have a lot to do, though, so... Yes, for all of one person watching me. I hope you're enjoying this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mark off an area that's going to become the belt by using what's called masking. I'm just going to actually make this bigger. And then come around this way. We're going to end up trimming some of this off so that it's more even. Like this. Okay, now what I do, <coughs> I got on the sub tool, and I set it to 0.03, because we want a nice thick belt on this guy. I extract, it projects out, and I accept. Yay! Now this creates a new sub tool for the belt, but it's selected, so I deselect. I then go back up to the body and I deselect, just to make sure it doesn't repeat itself. Now I have a belt. i blend a little bit here because that's kind of what happens. I'm going to Geometry, I'm going to Dynamesh it at 256. Because we want it to be a little bit... Now, with Inflate, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, no, that's about right. And I'm going to Inflate in here. And then smooth it. Okay. And there we go. And then here, you notice that it's kind of straightening out those curves, which is what we want. We want it to be more of a belt and not a not a uh, strap. We want it to be more hard leather than soft cloth. Okay, there we go, that's our belt. Now we're going to add in a couple other straps. Oh crap, I forgot the pauldron. Oh well, I'll just have to make one in here. Um, the other straps we're going to make, we're going to go ahead and hide here. We're going to make a pauldron first. And what we're going to do for that is we're just simply going to make... Well, let's grab here, come around this way, and we're going to black, basically cover up most of the uh, deltoid. We're also going to kind of go up a bit too high, because we're going to use it, the up too high part, we're going to clean it off whoop, to give a sharp corner to our pauldron. The actual character wears leather armor, so... 
we can go ahead and have a couple... Actually, let's go ahead and give him a series of lames coming out from under that. Uh, point zero 0.03 should be good. Extract. Accept. And then we're going to deselect. And we grab him and we deselect. And we go down to the geometry and we're going to Dynamesh at 256. And then we're going to make go back to move topological and make this bigger. Grab this part and move it out a bit because we want room for the other lames. Okay. Now we go down to sub tool. Let's hide this. And we're going to shrink the mouse back down. And we're going to start here and come all the way down to here. And bring it around. Now what we're going to do, we're going to shrink down the mouse. We're going to make it a sharp edge here. And then, let's see how is it covered. Okay. We're going to come in from here. Because we want it to be a nice broad lame covering a large part of the arm. Okay, and then we're going to extract it at point zero 0.02. Deselect, we're going to turn this on. And then we're going to Geometry, Dynamesh at 256. And then we're going to make it a little bit bigger and smooth, and that's going to blend in this particular warp. Although that get rid of some of the... yeah, let's go ahead and do it this way. Okay, and then one, two... blend that a little bit and now what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide it because we want to add some details to it lower we're going to take this one lower we're going to start by turning this into lames and not just one we're going to make it at least two. So we're going to start with layer. We're going to stroke so we can go over here and turn off lazy mouse. And we're going to make it a lot larger. Let's shrink this down. And what we're going to do is we're going to start here. Uh, that tells us that it's too small of a brush and too weak of an extrusion. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to smooth the edge here. Actually, what we need to do is we now need to sub need to uh, dynamesh it again. No. Dynamation at 512. And then shrink the mouse and smooth this edge. We're going to worry about 
inflation smoothing in a minute. Okay. Now we're going to we're going to subdivide it. And we're going to slash. And what we're going to do with the slash, we're going to turn off that lazy mouse. We're going to drop it down to about 16. And we're going to kind of dig somewhat in and somewhat under. And then here. And then we're gonna hit just the edge of the smooth of the uh, the seam, and we've got lames. Very clearly. Okay, we're going to be adding some detail to that shoulder pad here in a little bit, but before we do. We've got to add the straps for that sho for the shoulder pad. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to start down here at the bicep. And we're going to mark off a strap. And this comes back up this way. We're also going to go ahead and going to mark off a strap from here to there and from here to there. No, from here to there. <coughs> We're going to hide the shoulder pads so that we can have in a little bit more this way and over here and then we're going to turn the belt on to make sure that it's covering up yes now this we're going to extract a point zero two accept it turn it off grab him turn him uh, turn off his etchings Geometry dynamite at 256. Then we're going to smooth the muscled parts. We're going to use standard. And yes, we gotta come up here and turn off lazy mouse. Make it bigger. Turn off the intensity and use standard to pull it out and here especially a little bit of the move topological to grab and Pull out the edge here, and here, and here. Then I'm going to kind of smooth this down, and let's see what happens when we turn on the arm plates. Yeah, we're going to have to use move topological and we're gonna grab this and bring it in and there and the same thing on this side and then we turn on the this and that
Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add one more strap and it's going to come around under the right arm. So we select this our, our buddy here, going to shrink the mouse and we're going to mask off here. And this is going to extract, accept, deselect, deselect, geometry, Dynamesh, 256, and right under the arm is about the only place we're going to really need to worry about it. So we're going to make the mouse bigger, grab, and nope. Wrong thing to grab. Grab up here and pull it out. And there we go. We have our, our straps. We're going to be adding buckles in a little bit. <clears throat> now we need to make sure that these subtools are all decent polygon count. We've got them for the plates, but for these straps, no. Actually, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and let's merge all of these straps into one harness. They're all of, as you can see, roughly similar polygon size. So now we turn off that. And so we subdivide it a couple times. Lower. Now. The next thing that we're going to do before we start worrying about uh, uh, the buckles and that is we're going to is we're going to add in a little bit of detail on the kilt. So we go to the subtool with the kilt, which is the main subtool. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use slash add eight, shrink it a bit. We're going to make a seam here. We're going to make it we're going to dig under And now I'm going to shrink the mouse. No, I'm going to make it about there. And I'm going to smooth this area oh. without touching the actual groove. Frame out, and it's clearly a seam. Okay, good. I'm going to, just to emphasize it just a little bit. I'm going to go back to the standard. Make it a little bit bigger. And it's going to pull it out a little more. And then smooth the base make it quite clear that it is in fact cloth that's folded over that, that meets at that side of the leg all right I've been now doing this for one hour the next thing I need to do is add some wrinkles to that uh, kilt well it's not really a kilt it's more of a it, it, it's more of a war skirt, but yeah. So what I need to do, I need to uh, increase the intensity just a little bit, and I'm going to make it a point that this 
is where these wrinkles are coming from. and then coming up from here and they're coming I need to kind of full this fill this one in a little and fill in the top of this and the top of this the ends of the wrinkles should all be smoothed out because that's what they do in the same way that the wrinkles kind of zigzag over here on the side because that is how the wrinkles do all right now, I'm going to use the slash tool. We're going to start off with an add of yeah, about eight. And we're going to put these slashes on the bottom third of each of these wrinkles. The reason for this is because that's what wrinkles do. It's called gravity. And then coming from here, oh, from here, come up, from here, come up and then from bottom here we come up then whoops in theory, I could do a lot of this by using, there's a option that you can add on or turn on for these a lot of these brushes called gravity. I don't like the results, so I don't use it. And then I put a cut directly under each of these wrinkles. Now, the reason for having both a cut and a ridge, number one, wrinkles are angular they're not as flowy smoothy as a lot of people draw them or initially sculpt them most people immediately start drawing wrinkles instead of as being folds as being these soft smooth loopy loop shapes and that's just simply not what they are this helps us give them a bit more of an angle to the sculpting of these wrinkles and then oh, when we get them all done when it comes time to paint well, the two most common techniques used in painting today, and in fact, since I was painting, my, I first started painting years ago, dry brushing and washes. A dry brush catches the topmost edge and deposits pigment there. A wash sinks into the crevices and deposits pi pigments there. Thus, it has both uh, deep grooves and high ridges. Now, next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, let's, let's bring these in. I'm going to subdivide the horns and I need to tweak their positions.
No. Move. Not move. Topological. And then I'm going to come up here. Make it big. Turn on transparency because I need to see this bottommost horn. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to bring it around to here. And what that does, that gets it in the right position because it's following the neck now. Yeah, that's fine. Let's dynamic it 256. Okay. Now, we've got a lot of sculpting to do on... Let's, we've got several buckles to make. Um, we're going to make each one of these buckles a little gem. And how are we going to do that, you say? Simple. With a brush that is a gem. Literally. Now... We're going to split unmasked parts. Because we're going to end up uh, tweaking these. Both their position and their size. Okay, so that's three different gemstones that we're going to be tweaking on. This one is the first one. We're going to use move. We're going to turn on the, the, the transparency so we can make sure we can see all of it. Make the mouse a bit bigger, and we're going to drag it somewhat out. We want enough for it to be visible above the surface reasonably well but not so much that it's completely obscuring everything and we're also going to grab it and drag it down a little okay now we go to the next gem which is the front belt buckle that's the biggest one and we're going to just go ahead and make the whole thing come forward turn off transparency and it's working kind of decently, but let's shrink the mouse down a bit and move the front half of it forward. And now the last one, the big, the 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 front one. We're not going to have to do the transparency, but we are going to grab the top of it and pull it top forward. We're going to grab the bottom of it down here and kind of pull it back. Because one of the purposes of it is it's kind of... Then we're going to... It's to hide the... Join of these two straps. And then... Let's shrink it manually. Yeah, there we go. Then we're going to grab it here. And pull it a little bit forward. We're going to grab it here, pull a little bit forward, and there we have our gemstone buckles. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of coherency, let's merge them together. Now we have our armor. I'm going to dynamesh this tool because it's got some issues right at the seam between the lames. It's got a bit of a wrinkle, so I'm going to dynamesh it. No, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to dynamesh it at 768. I'm going to shrink the mouse and smooth it a little bit more. And 
Open that. Then we're going to use slash. And we're going to redraw. No. We need to make it a bit bigger. Go from here down this way. From here, let's make it down this way. Now what we need is we need more than 29,000 points. So we're going to divide it. No, that's too much. 117,000 points. And what we're going to do is just simply make trim. We're going to use inflate. I'm going to increase that intensity to 26. And we're going to shrink it. No, let's increase it to 15. We're going to shrink it. And we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to have my hand on the 1 key. And I'm, I draw on these inflated areas. Oh, I don't need to. It's doing it nicely for me. Let's... Oh, I see why. Let's bring that focal shift to zero, thank you. Two. And then... And then we're going to dynamesh it again. And this time we're going to very gently use a slight bit of that. Tweak some of these areas that need it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and subdivide it a couple once just to uh, make sure. Now we're going to the main pauldron. And here what we're going to add, as you can see it's looking pretty nicely so far, but what we're going to add is we're going to add some uh, decoration. And we're going to use the layer tool to do it. And what it's going to be is it's going to be a very stylized dragon, actually. Let's make that a bit larger. Now, let's see what happens. Brush. Tablet pressure. The intensity stays. Okay. No. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shrink it just a little bit. We're going to draw on... No, too big. Too big a, a, a hook. Make it smaller and I'll just go back over. And then... Just 
this might be the Wyvern tribe or something, because I'm going to make it more Wyvern-like. And then just a little bit of something, something interesting. And then let's invert it and frame. Okay. Now, I need to make, I need to subdivide the gems to make them roughly equal to the uh, rest of it. Sword is nice. I might add some kind of inscription on it. Let's subdivide the sword. But for right now, I still need to do one major thing. I need to tweak the hands. Yes, hands are very important. They define a lot about a character. Got to go to inflate. And then I make the mouse roughly the size of the fingers. I need to make it manually enter it because it's skipping over the size I need. Okay. And then we're going to add in knuckle. Knuckle, 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 oh, knuckle, and then we add in the tendons that are on that part of the hand. We're going to make it a little bit lighter. Then we add in our two knuckles per finger, and we smooth between them. The reason for this is because this, you know, helps make it more even, more natural. Your fingers don't look like little straight sausages. You also need to smooth here, but that's all we really need to do for now. We're going to get back to that. Uh, no, we need to bring it down, make the mouse a little bit bigger, and bring it inflated a little bit here and a little bit here and smooth this all. This converts it into a regular hand. We're also going to add in the wrist bones. And let's Pull out a little bit. We need to tweak this hand. And we start it the same way. We're gonna knuckle, 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 knuckle sandwich. And we're gonna draw in our tendons. Actually, this one needs to come down straighter. And blend in the bottoms of these tendons and a little bit of the tops. Then we add in knuckle here, knuckle here. And we add in the knuckles in proportion to where they would be 
on that actual finger which means the index and the ring are almost identical and then as if you couldn't guess the middle is a little bit longer and the pinky is a little bit shorter now those of you who are going to be printing this with an FDM if you decide to print it the details in the hands may not come out a hundred percent but it will be enough to give more of an impression of a real hand and less of a Vienna sausage. Now we need to inflate the inside of the thumb because the thumb tends to bend a little weird in my base geometry. We also need to make it a little bit larger here and smooth it and add the wrist bones a little bit under here once again to make it look more like a hand. We're also going to add in those tendons. For those who have not seen those before, some of us actually have a pair of tendons right here that when you're grasping something tightly show up. Okay. Frame out. Okay, except for the actual you know, anything on the sword, we're pretty good. If we do anything on the sword, we need to pivot this around because it needs to be done like this. Decorated so that when held with the sword edge down, it would be oriented properly. So, I'm trying to figure out what I should add down there on, the, on that blade. Maybe just a little bit of decoration, so it's like random shapes and, and curly cues, like... Also, geometry, one more subdivision level. No, nope, I need added. And then this way is just going to have a couple of wonky bits. Most people aren't going to see it, but it's going to have at least something there to help carry across the theme. Now, the only things left to do, I need to add in a sphere in the mouth. Also, I need to go to these horns and resubdivide them. Now, let's pull this out. I'm going to append a sphere. And I'm going to use deformation, scale, or size, down, down, oh, negative 100, negative 100. Now I'm going to raise it up. And it's still too big, so I'm going to shrink it down some more. The reason for this is I need to block off that side of the mouth. And then let's offset it by... No, I think it's Z. Yeah, it's mostly Z. And now I'm going to zoom in on it and I'm going to use move, remove topological, doesn't matter, 
kind of put tweak it in place enough for it to be visible but not so much that it's going to be too difficult to print. Alrighty. I'm pretty much done. It's a little bit faster than average. It's 9.30. At least by my time. Your time might be different. And I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to start merging down. And then, once I've gotten everything in position, and this is our base figure. The detailing on the sword and the shoulder might not show up on an FDM print, but there's enough detail for an FDM print that will still be worthwhile and still be pretty cool. Now what we do is we import one last object and that is we import one of the bases I have a series of bases I've made and I don't think we're gonna use diamond plate or tectiles um, I've used grass planks and rock recently so I'm gonna make it cobblestone now that's our cobblestone base. I've got to move it because that doesn't look right there. So we go over here. We're going to first offset it X. Then we're going to offset it Y. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna offset it Z because its bases tend to go a little bit forward from where you think they would be. As you can see, it it's, needs to come forward just a little bit there, and this is well. Subtool merge down. This is our wild dragonborn miniature. We a wild dragonborn appears. So now we have a two point oh two million polygon object that is made up of multiple different meshes. This is not going to 3D print well. Not at all. So we used, first of all, Dynamesh at 768 again. Bing! 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 And we end up with 1.476 million, which is cons somewhat less, but also fuses the whole thing into one solid piece. Now we need this to be a lot lower polygon because the polygon count is 1.495, 1 1.5 million polygons. Most slicers are going to go, you want me to what? So instead what we do is we go up to the Z plugin. I pop it over here so you can see it. And under Decimation Master, which is you know right here, You'll see this buttons right here, 20, 35, 75. What this does is that's how many points, not polygons, points, are going to be roughly there after it's done with the decimation. 35K is where I usually put most of my figures. So when I do 35K, 
do 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 um but um bum 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 <clears throat> and it screwed up. Yeah, it screwed up. It stopped without reaching the end. So, what we do, we go back to before I did the Dynamesh. And let's change it to 765. No, 770. Dynamesh. And now it's 920. Oh, sh Nikes. I forgot to add in the damn. Yeah, I totally screwed up there. Append. Alright, all right, let's see. Okay, import base cobblestone. And we go back to tweaking its position. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I screw up badly. And merge down. Let me change the Dynamesh to 770. Dynamesh, or 784. And that's 1.546. Okay. Turn that off, and we hit 35K once again. Please work this time. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Whoop, 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 Uh, yes, it is working this time. Yay! Midgradal will have a new miniature by next game session. Woohoo! <laughs> and it is 70,041 triangles. If you look carefully, you can see the triangles which, where you couldn't before, but the actual detail that will be printed in the mesh... That's still all nice, right, and proper. Yes. Now, we go ahead and we export into our broadcast miniatures new wild dragonborn figure. Alrighty. And that is all she wrote. So, I apparently have lost the sole viewer that I had. I'm sorry I lost you. If you're watching these videos on my YouTube archive, just like, subscribe, do the whole nine yards. And uh, we'll be getting ready to, to, to head on out of here in just a, just a moment. So I'm going to be holding up my hand like this. Oh, and by the way, this will be on Thingiverse in just a few minutes from the time I end this video. Any cubic, the photon, 
resin printer. Freaking amazing. Ralph, a cat. Affectionate, but annoying. Down you go. Go. No, no, no. No! <laughs> no! Ah. You insane furball! Uh, somebody's just a bit... Hmm. Yes. Crazy cat. Anyway. How can you stay mad at that? What? No, not yet. I'm going to hold up my hand, well, this hand. And he and Ralph's going to hold up his tail. And when I Really? Really, cat? When I get to one, I'm going to you know, re uh That'll be end of the broadcast to, to compensate for lag. So, do you mind? Okay. So that'll be five, four, three, two, one. And bye-bye.